The following is a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about them, Cowboys? Yeah! Go Cowboys! This, this is Cowboys Storyline with Nick Eatman. Welcome to Cowboys Storyline. I am Nick Eatman here. It is March 14th, Thursday, and we've had a little stuff happen in here. I know last show we said, well, give us a week. We'll see if things were going to change, if the narrative changes. I don't know if it's changed completely as far as Cowboys aren't doing anything, but they are. They've done a little something uh, last night. They uh, agreed to terms with linebacker Eric Kendricks, and I'm sure you guys have seen that by now, and I'll weigh in on on that move and see if that's uh, if that does anything for you. A veteran linebacker knows the scheme. Obviously, he's played a long time in Minnesota. I believe eight years with the Vikings. Uh, most of that under um, Mike Zimmer. Most of that. Um, so, so Zimmer knows him well. And then he went to the Chargers last year, and and he was released. Uh, so you know, he's an older linebacker. Signed a one-year deal, but. We'll see, you know, see what he what he's got. He he was gonna sign with the the 49ers and changed his mind and went went with Zimmer. So Dan Quinn's not the only one, you know, that's kind of reuniting with players, former guys that that, that he's coached before, and obviously uh we'll see if it works out. But at least, you know, from the outside perspective, Cowboys are are definitely on the board now with with getting uh, I say that on the board that he hasn't officially signed yet, and he's already changed his mind once, so we'll see if he if he doesn't do that. But uh, I don't think he'll do that this time. I think he's going to sign with the Cowboys probably tomorrow on that. All right, 888-855-2297. We're going to go uh, an hour here today. We're not going to go overtime like we did Tuesday. We've got to cut it right at 2 o'clock here, so we're going to get going on the phone lines. we got Javon in Toledo, Ohio. What's up? Hey, what's going on? Well, I know you're first hey. time caller. Oh, uh, yeah. Oh. Here, go. Here we go. There it is. All right, man. How you doing? Right. Fine. That's about about yourself, man. I'm good. Let's start us off. What you got? All right. So my first thing is about the free agency. So everybody's mad about we didn't get somebody at the, the first day or whatever, but we never do. We never get nobody the first week. Right. Jerry Jones mainly try to get the back end of the draft. I mean, not the back end of the draft, but back end of the uh, free agency. Mm-hmm. Just a fill in hole. So, Basically, what I'm thinking, I just want your opinion on it. Um, I think what they're going to do is they're not going to sign Dak right off. they probably sign him, I say, at the end of this week. Or maybe not the end of this week, maybe the end of next week. But they're going to sign him in time in order to get the, the rest of they want in the free agency to fill up the holes they have on defense. And then, off, I mean, during the draft, just dra- uh, draft who they need for offense. I'd like to know what's your opinion about this. That, uh, but on that, then I'll yeah. uh, get, get over with you. All right. Uh, you, do you have another question, or is that it? Uh, no, not really. That's about it. Okay. I'll try to call in again. I'm a truck driver, so I had a lot of time on my hands. All right. All right. <laughs> awesome, man. We appreciate that. Appreciate what you do and hauling things from one side of the world to the other. Uh, you know, this this DAC thing is, is crazy because there's so many options the Cowboys kind of have. I, I just don't see – I think I heard you say you think it's going to be done by the end of this week. Like, I don't see that happening. I don't see even CD or Dak kind of playing f- to help the Cowboys here. And I'm not saying they're trying to hurt the Cowboys. I, the Cowboys could, could make this happen too. I just don't see the start of free agency being the reason why these deals happen or, or they don't happen. So um, I think the Cowboys can do some things – they have money. I think that's one one thing you got to remember. They have some money here. They just they're trying to to be smart with it because they know they need to roll over as much as they can into next year. So whether or not they spend some of that right now, you know, I mean, think about it. Think about it. it just in your own bank account. If you had a a thousand dollars in there, you know, you have it, you know, but you need it for something else down the road well you know do you just wait for that or you're like well i'm gonna get this other paycheck coming in here so i'll spend a little bit here and then when this you know it's it's that kind of thing so they can do DAC later i don't think they have to do DAC right now and i'm not sure that they want to do that that at all because anything you do with that unless like there's gonna be 36 million dollars in dead money for DAC next year Regardless, I mean, there's there's going to be 36 million, 
So if you sign him to this big deal where he's the highest paid quarterback in the league, then whatever you do and whatever his base and his proration and all that goes on top of that. So if you don't do anything at all, you just play it out, and he becomes a free agent, it's $36 million already. So that that's going to happen. So if you if you try to create some room this year, it's going to just you know have more of a problem next year. And so that that's the dilemma the Cowboys are in there. All right, uh, let's stay in the in the state of Ohio, Greg in Columbus, Ohio. Hey Nick, how are you? Good man, how are you doing? I'm doing good. I was uh, doing some problem solving for the Cowboys, and I remember back when Jerry was Wildcat Jerry. Okay. And remember who used to be in his his ear when it was Wildcat Jerry? That was Jimmy Johnson. Who's in Jerry's ear now? Jimmy Johnson. And what I'm saying is, all right. Do you do you think there could be a possibility that we could get rid of a player for about four draft picks who really, to be truthful, he has about six, seven, maybe eight games where he's really good and he tails off at the end of the season every year. And maybe we can turn a number seven overall draft pick back out and get a couple more draft picks out of that. And so then you get like five players for one player. Are you talking about Micah Parsons? I am. Uh, get rid of him. We got to get rid of him. He's going to be a problem next year with doing a contract. We already got two problems already. He's going to be a problem. And Khalil Mack got traded. Yeah. No. Marcus Ware got, Marcus Ware got traded. No. He's, no, he's no better. Yeah. Um, all right. Well. That's, that's what that. All right. We we can't have ten players making fifty million dollars a year. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, well, yeah. All but right. if you can turn if you could turn one of those players into five or six draft picks, why not do that? Well, because you're losing that one player that's worth five or six draft picks. I mean, that's why you don't do it. I mean, that's that's why. I mean, I mean, there's. There's a reason why Aaron Donald hasn't been traded. I mean, there's there's a reason for that. I mean, they they yeah. want to keep him. He's a he's a stud player. He's a difference maker, and that's that's what you're hoping for. You're like, will will Micah Parsons continue to develop as a player, as a person, keep maturing as a player, as a person, and keep getting your team over over the hump and and can be that kind of dynamic. You you, you lucked out. You got an unbelievable player at number twelve. Um, so there's a reason why you wouldn't want to trade him. If you think that it's this is the best it's going to be, and I can get all this for him, then then yeah, I mean maybe the Cowboys would would do that. Um, I will be surprised if that happens, but I, I don't think it's it, that's not like ever being discussed. I mean yeah, I mean I think you you, you talk about that kind of stuff because if Dorrance is going to get 15 million a year, man, what's my company? <laughs> right, and and, me, and also. As of right now, I would take thirty million, uh, whatever is his name is, down there in Tampa. Uh, Baker Mayfield. I, yeah, I hated him when he played for Oklahoma for what he did to Ohio State, but I would take him over thirty at thirty million dollars. I would take him over Dak at six any day of the week. Okay. Well. Agree to Thanks. disagree on that. That's fine. All right, Greg. Well, Thank you. Thanks for the call. Um, yeah, I didn't agree with a lot of that stuff that he said, um, honestly. And, and I'll say this. Jerry and Jimmy may be talking. I don't think Jerry – Let's. it's not like he's the, the GM in his ear. I mean, like that's not, that's not the case. And if it was, they certainly wouldn't say it. I don't think Fox is going to be okay with him being an analyst and, and doing all that and, 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 and talking to the Cowboys – you know, and trying to help that. No, that's not the case. I think I think they're they're friendly again. He's in the Ring of Honor. They're, it, it, Jimmy and Jerry. You know, their relationship is is the way it should be. Um, and, and that's that's kind of to me. That's the extent of it. I could be wrong. I know what Jimmy said, but I, I I'm not I'm not thinking that he's sitting in on draft meetings or anything like that. Um, dra- trading Micah scares me just because I I think you have it. I think you have an unbelievable player and and. I just I don't know I I I 
I see the logic, and you know, and I and and Khalil Mack is what he said got traded, and you know, some of those those deals like that, you know, they, they got a lot of money. Demarcus Ware did not get; he, he was released by the Cowboys, um, and he just signed with with Denver. Um, but you know, I, I I don't I don't see that happening. I I, I think the Cowboys are going to keep keep their they, they like to keep their their star players uh, for a reason and, and build around them, but. Um, you know, stranger things have happened, I guess. All right, let's go to Bill in New Haven, Connecticut. What's going on, Nick? How are you doing? Hey, not bad. How about yourself? Oh, great, 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 great. There we, there we go. Hey, the other day you had mentioned, and a lot of people have floated this idea, too, and it's, it's not a narrative because it's actually fact. It's true. But you guys said that the front office knew that 24 and 25 were going to be very tough years for the Cowboys just based off the dead cap hits that they pushed off into the future. Yeah. And and if you follow the money, that's absolutely true. But as a fan, what that actually does, and maybe you could agree with it, disagree, I don't know, that makes them not being aggressive in 21 and 22 even worse because – if you knew the cap hit, the cap situation was going to intensify, twenty four and twenty five, we're living it now. Then why wouldn't you, if you foresee it coming, why wouldn't you at that point with a playoff team, of twelve and five teams, empty up some of your chips and go go grab this thing? And if and if your idea of you know being aggressive, and listen, both of these trades worked out for them. You got to give them credit for them. But if, they're, if their idea is giving up fifth-round picks for Brandon Cooks and, and Gilmore, then there's a bigger issue than just sitting out free agency because that's what they get paid money to do. And like you and many others have said, they saw a problem coming. And yet, do you think they were aggressive the last few years? Yeah. Because y- you do or you don't? Yeah, I do. I mean, I, I do. What, 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 would, what would make you think that they weren't aggressive? Well, listen, let me just let me make sure I'm articulating myself clearly. I yeah. don't think they were aggressive as they could have been. Like in Maybe, free agency? In free agency? Free agency or even like we mentioned in other talks that we've had, I don't think they haven't given up, you know, valuable picks for trade. Do you do you think they did? No, they didn't give up valuable picks, but but I mean, they've they've been I think they've been somewhat aggressive and, and also keeping their players intact. Um, you know, keeping their, their core players. I think that's one thing that fans forget sometimes because it's just like any kid. They're not worried. When they go to the store, they don't ever say, I've got these 25,000 toys over here. They want right. the one that they see right there. And so they don't care about, you know what, Dad, I'm good because I've got a bunch at home. Who says that? The fans, it's the same It's the same way. It's like, right. oh, oh, you signed last year in, tri- in free, um, training camp. Oh, cool. They signed Zach Martin. Finally, get him in here. Cool. What about, oh, Malika Hooker. Okay. Uh, yeah, good good deal. Good good trade. I'll be good. Good signing. But, Who else? Oh, Diggs. Nice. But, but it's like, that's, that, that counts too. Like, that counts on the cap. Absolutely. It, it, it does count. You're right. And we shouldn't shortchange him for that. But at the same token, we sit around here for so many years trying to build a team that can consistently be in the playoffs. And they've got one now. They should be credited for that. Instead of the 8-8 and up and down the roller coaster, they have a perennial playoff team. And you would hope that they would say, you know what? The Green Bay thing set us back. We weren't as good as we thought, but we're close. Yeah. Maybe not elite, but let's make the moves to get us there. And it just seems like there's a lot of – and it's early in the offseason. you got to give them the time. I get that. Yeah. But it seems like there's a lot of – Hugging and high five in over twelve and five seasons, and this off season is going to play out just like it has the last however many. And I think the results will be the same. I'd love to be wrong. I'll be here talking about it with you. I just don't see the intensity that other that I see from other places. All right, all right, I, I hear you. Um, all right, thanks for the call, Bill. Thanks, buddy. Appreciate that. Um, let's take a break real quick on Cowboy Storyline. Um, we'll be right back in a second. Take a break. Todd thought it would be secure to jog in the cheetah savannah. Todd believed the big cat repellent he bought online was reliable. And now, Todd is trying to be faster than this cheetah that can run 80 miles per hour. But the good news is, Todd has AT&T 5G that is fast, reliable, and secure. And he learned the best thing to do is stop running and toss her the backpack with the beef stew. AT&T 5G. 
Fast, reliable, secure. It's not complicated. 5G requires compatible plan and device. 5G may not be available in your area. See att.com slash 5G for you for details. Cowboys fans, after that move, we've just coined the term Rowdy Replay. Let's roll back the tape. Okay, there's our mascot, Rowdy, cheering on the boys. And now he's on his phone, on his Bank of America mobile banking app? Staying on top of his finances with his virtual financial assistant, Erica. Bank of America's digital tools are so impressive. Cowboys fans just can't stop banking. Learn more at bankofamerica.com slash can't stop banking. Erica is only available in the English language. You must download the latest version of the mobile banking app, only available on select mobile devices. Message and data rates may apply. Member FDIC. Welcome back into Dear Doctor, the show where I answer life's questions with an ice-cold can of Dr. Pepper. Sheila, let's hear from our next caller, would you? Dear Doctor, my friend supported me during a tough time, but what's the right gift that says, thanks for being a shoulder to cry on? Okay, this one's easy. I say, give her a delicious Dr. Pepper. Nothing says, thanks girl, better than a -a one-of-a-kind soda. Yes, any Dr. Pepper flavor will do. Now, just a reminder that I don't need to be a real doctor to know that Dr. Pepper is the one you deserve. They say champions are remembered, but legends are never forgotten. United Ag and Turf offers a winning lineup of John Deere equipment built to tackle any challenge on and off the field. Legendary John Deere tractors, combines, residential mowers, commercial mowers, compact construction equipment, gator utility vehicles, and a full line of golf and sports turf equipment. United Ag and Turf, the official Ag and Turf equipment supplier of the Dallas Cowboys. Visit unitedagandturf.com to find a location near you. Back, back to Cowboys Storyline. All right, guys, back here on Cowboys Storyline. It's a lot of stuff going on here um, as far as the uh, the free agency news going on. Just to, to let everybody know, the Cowboys have agreed to terms with uh, Jordan Lewis. Jordan Lewis has uh, agreed to terms on a one-year deal to return to the team. So uh, just letting our people know that I was trying to make some phone calls there that we are good to go uh, on that, and we can announce that. So that's good. That's another That's another move, another guy, another veteran uh, core player uh, coming back, another one-year deal. Um, they got Kendricks. There you go. There you go. There you go. And uh, and you've got uh, Jordan Lewis as well. So um, that I think that's 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 positive. I mean, I wonder what that means for a guy like Stephon Gilmore, who's also a free agent, got a shoulder injury. Um, but but to get to get Lewis back in the fold there, an, a slot guy, that that gives him some versatility with Deron Bland as well. So. Good move for the Cowboys there, uh, getting uh, getting Jordan Lewis. All right, let's go to uh, the phone line. Chris in Mississippi. First things first, I appreciate it, Nick. It, it was an honor to be on the honor honorable mentions. Yeah. Uh, um, I just wanted to say, I told Chris in the break, that sometimes when I call from Mississippi, it tells me that I can't be connected. So I don't know what's going on with that. I mean, I've made TNT. you I guess it's another team <laughs> or something that's in between us that's stopping me from getting to y'all. But, um, and that's just a joke. But, yeah. you know, I, I'm honestly, I was Uh-oh. Uh-oh. It's been a while since we've heard from Chris of Mississippi. You there? All right. Chris. All right, All right Chris. I think he was going to say that he thinks Dak should get re-signed because he's a Mississippi guy and he likes watching him at Mississippi State and he thinks that Dak is should be is going to win the Super Bowl at one day. Something like that. I don't know. Uh, I'm kidding. Um all right, let's get let's keep it moving here. Mark in Canada? Hey. You there, Mark? Yes, I am. All right, let's go. All right. Um yeah, I just think uh, I think the Cowboys need to uh, to do a little bit more free agency. And I know that sounds like I know we've talked about it a bunch, but I just feel like oh, I'm a first time caller too. All right, but um, yeah, I just feel like that there's uh, you know it's a you keep beating your head against the wall and expecting a different result. You know that's kind of insanity. And I find like that's kind of what they're doing here. It's like we're going to like cherry pick through free agency and we're going to draft, you know, pretty good players. And I think they've done well through the draft, but it's just, 
it's not getting us over the hump. And I think, like, if you look at Philadelphia, to get them over the hump, they kind of went all in a few years ago. And uh, I think we need to kind of do a little bit more of the same idea. You, when did when did Philly go all in? You mean to win the Super Bowl <clears throat> that yeah. year? Yeah. 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 Now that that approach and the Rams did it too. That that approach has proven to work. It also proves sometimes that it doesn't work too. I mean, like not everybody wins, and there's oh. a lot of people that are oh. aggressive. I think the Cowboys yeah. have been aggressive. I mean, I really do. I think the Cowboys have have tried to make moves to to get to this point. Um, it's not always in free agency, but it's not always March in free agency. I mean, th- this team has shown in the last few years to go get some veteran guys, some veteran names, and add them to the list to try to help the team. I mean, sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. I mean, these these 30 or 40 signings that you see, in my opinion, five of them are going to be good. Of the 30 guys mm-hmm. that you've seen, five of them are going to be good and probably worth the money that they're getting. Five out of th- yeah. that's that's my opinion. I could be wrong, but it's usually not. I mean, everyone's excited from Philly about you know Saquon Barkley, and, and I get it. I mean, it's that's he's a big name, but every one of these guys, you know, they got something to them. They got they got some kind of issue. Look at all the Cowboys free agents. They're free agents for a reason. They got something there that you're like, well, Dorrance, you know, Biotish, Tyron's been hurt. You know, I mean, all, all these things, but um. I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just I kind of disagree a little bit with the fact that they haven't really been aggressive. I just they're not aggressive on the first two days of free agency, so it looks like they they're doing nothing. But you know, they've signed two players, yeah. three three players. Yeah, yeah. No, and I agree in that sense. But it's what's I mean, outside of like Stephon Gilmore, which they kind of traded for. Yeah. You know, you got to look at some names that that they got to bring in that's going to like put them over the hump. And I find the guys that bring in a free agency, they're like role players. They're like, you know, backups or, or third stringers kind of guys that they're just kind of coming in. And I think when you look in the playoffs, the way I see it, it's like they have to kind of get like play makers that are going to be, you know, impact players. And it doesn't have to be like shut down corners. You know, like I don't think Bland is a shut down corner. I think he's a playmaking corner you know, that's going to you know, give up a big play, but make a big play. Right. And, you know, I think you need more of that kind of, uh, more of that kind of impact, I think, on our team where I just don't feel like we have it. It's like, and it's a struggle. Like, and, you know, it's not like you can go, what do they say? You can't go to a grocery store and get, you know, a left tackle. You know, oh, this is, I want a Pro Bowl left tackle. Let's just go right. buy one, right? Like, right. Well, it doesn't happen like that. No, it, it doesn't. And I, you know, and I appreciate the call. Um, um, who we got? Mark, Mark in Canada. Sorry, I've been a little flustered here. All right, Mark in Canada. I, you know, I, I kind of disagree with some of that. Um, I think it's both. I mean, I, I don't think you're 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 wrong in that you want to see some playmakers here in free agency, but. Look, and I'm not picking on this guy. I'm not. It's just it's setting the bar. Is Dorrance Armstrong a playmaker? I mean, seriously, is he a playmaker? Because he gets fifteen million dollar a year. Like that's that's the contract. That's where we are when you sign a guy to the first or second day of free agency. And when you have ninety million, like Washington had, and they earn that ninety million by sucking for a, a few years. I mean, that's just the way it is. They they've been a bad football team. That's why you get the number two overall pick because you're not good. And, and so that's what Dan Quinn is there to do, to try to get them better. And, the, and he got a lot of money. So you can overpay, and, I, and I'll say that. They overpaid for a guy like Doran Armstrong or T- Tyler Biotish or all that. Fowler, I don't know what he got. But, you know, they're, they're spending that money, and, and, and good for them. But that doesn't mean that you're getting a playmaker. Saquon Barkley, that's not necessarily sure that, you're, that the Eagles are getting a playmaker in, in that. Um, Henry... To, to the Ravens. I mean, like, it, or Eric Kendricks here. Let's, let's be honest. I mean, just because Eric Kendricks has been good doesn't mean he's going to be good. Um, we, we've seen a lot of linebackers, veteran linebackers over the years that signed here. Keith Brooking was pretty good. Zach Thomas, he's Hall of Famer, but I mean, he wasn't a Hall of Famer for the Cowboys, you know? So you, you, you don't know what you're going to get here at the end of, of, of a guy's career. That's all I'm saying. So my point is, is that, you're worried about getting playmakers and you're not worried about these, these nice, you know, I think that's what Mark just said. You're getting these guys that come in and fill a role, role players. You don't think those guys matter. I mean, they, they definitely matter. You have to have those guys. Um, look at, look at Philly 
last year. Very top heavy. A lot of a lot of great players at the, at the top of their position. But, you know, they had a lot of injuries and then they struggled down the stretch. That's how you lose 6 out of 7 games because you don't have the depth. The Cowboys have been there too where they they have a lot of big names, but they don't have a lot of depth 1 to 53. And that's what I think is important. It's important to sign guys like like Jordan Lewis, you know, get him done, things like that. So uh, I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, there's you got to balance. You just got to have a good balance. Oh, let's go back to the, uh, Chris in Mississippi's back on the line and see what his connection looks like. Yeah, I think it's a little better. I was trying to do something else on my phone at the same time, and I think that's what happened. But um, what I was going to say was, is I was trying to get to you when you were talking about Bobby Wagner Friday, and I'm like, please no. Please no. I'm tired of seeing us pick up people at the end of their career and then they not do anything here. Well, we and I have a – I mean, I just have a feeling that's what's going to happen this year with him. Well, what about Eric Kendricks? I, I mean, Same thing. I don't know I don't know a whole lot about Eric Kendricks, but I, I know that um, that's what I was trying to do when I lost you. I was trying to yeah. look him up and see everything. But, like, I mean, I don't know a whole lot about him, but – you know, you you were talking when I got off. I could hear you still um, about the Dak thing, and honestly, I'm I'm not one of those people that thinks we should re-sign Dak. The thing that I love about Dak is his leadership. Yeah, but I think that we should make him pay play up for it. And if he wants it, then he needs to play great again two years in a row, and let's let's go from there. I mean, if we have to pay him seventy, we have to pay him seventy. But I will t- I'll give you a hot take. And this is just me, and I think you know this from my calls on this show. I honestly, like my opinion, just because he's such a distraction and who he is and he can't stop the run, he plays one one style of ball and he doesn't want to play everything else and wants to act like he's the best thing in the world, I think we should take Michael Parsons and trade him for two number ones and move on our way and find somebody else. That's just my opinion. Now, that may blow your show up and people may call and say he's crazy and he's lost his mind. And You're stuff, the but. second person on this show today. We're only 30 minutes old. You're the second person <laughs> that said that. It's not it's it's not so hot. You know what I mean? It, it's a it's yeah. a warm take because there's people that you're honestly it, it's surprising to me, but yeah, there there's a lot of people that, that that think that way. And you know, there might be you know, I I I hear it in the media. I hear it some in the building. It's not it's not the the craziest thing that's ever happened, you know. Um, Demarcus Ware, I don't ever remember anyone ever saying we should just trade Ware. I mean, like, and I'm, you know, and I think Mike is even, you know, better than than Ware at this point. Oh, I mean, I think Mike is special. Honestly, I do. But I think it's his mouth. He's almost like a T.O. and stuff like that, and a Randy Moss where he talks too much and he's out here too much. You know what? But as color, I leave, you know, you know what as color? I leave the show. Okay, go ahead. As I as I leave the show, I'm I'm gonna ask you one thing. I want to know. I know that there was a Mississippi State player drafted before Dak, and he was on the practice squad. I wanted to know if you knew who that was. And I think there was another one back in the either in the 70s or the 80s that was drafted from Mississippi State, but I wanted to ask you who was the first person ever drafted by the Cowboys to play at Mississippi State. Y'all have a good day. All right. Is this like a trivia question, or are you, are you, <laughs> are you asking? I mean, honestly, I can't think of – other Mississippi State players um, that that played in the cow. I mean, for the Cowboys, really, for a lot many teams. I mean, I mean, I'm, Eric Molds for the Bills. You know, I mean, like uh, maybe Fletcher Cox. No, not Fletcher Cox. Um, I, I can't. I can't. Honestly, I don't know a ton of Mississippi State players um, that that played in there. Um, there was a corner that played. Um, I think he played for the for the uh, Redskins. And the Vikings, uh, I can't remember his name, but I can see his face. But he played at Mississippi State, also. But um, and he was one of those guys at Minnesota that was on the boat. I know that back when. And just Google that one. But Cowboys, Mississippi State, I don't know. I can't. I can't think of anybody uh, that, that that played there or even on on the practice squad. So, all right, um, let's go. Let's go to Sebastian in Savannah, Georgia. Man, 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 how are we doing, Mister Eman? What's up, man? I've been blowing your phone up for about a week now. <laughs> listen, I'm listening to the show, right? And I actually had to listen back. I missed my name the first time. I'm listening. I'm like, you know, okay, honorable mentions. I might make the honorable mentions section. I've caught a bunch of times. So I get through honorable mentions. Third team, I'm like, all right, that's it. I'm not on the team. And that's all good. So then I go and miss it because I was watching a car at the time. 
come back and I watched the show back, I think a couple of days ago. And I'm like, Sebastian Savannah, first, first team, let's go. There thank you, go. you so much. There thank you, you so much. Well, thank you. Hey, thank you. Uh, yeah. We actually signed somebody in free agency, I think. I'm not sure if that's 100% uh, on that Eric Kendricks is with the team or not. So that's really cool. But, you know, but just a big shout-out to you guys. Chris Beam in the back, Jazzy when she takes over and stuff like that. The show was awesome all year long, you know, and at, you can see you got a bunch of new callers calling in because a lot of people would love to make it next year, you know. But I'm going to try to do it like you did it just really quickly. Shout-out to Steve, Chris, Eric, Irene. Wasn't Irene the first female caller? I – I, I guess. I don't know what you're saying. I don't know if you're – are you talking on, like, regular speed? Or are you, like, fast-forwarding yourself? Like this. I was, I was doing, I said, I said, I'm going to try to do it like you, like you did at the end of the show, just just thanking everybody at the uh, who made the list and stuff like that. I can't remember them all off the top of my head. Like, you probably can, but I was just saying no. shout-out to, you know, Big Rob, Captain Rob, of course, and everybody, Eric, and I think Irene, Ali, Tim, Tim and, you know, yeah. Darren and everybody who made the list, too. But really cool. Thank you guys so much. I just definitely had to come through and, you know, say yeah. shout-out for the next season. Really excited for this year. Awesome. Well, I appreciate yeah. that. I mean, you guys, I, I think you guys, you, you're thanking me, but, I mean, this is what the show is about, is you guys calling and calling consistently and having great takes. I mean, like, that's one thing I keep hearing from other people that, that just say, wow, I didn't realize how, how intelligent – the fans are. Now, there are some every now and again that they're you know, head scratchers, but for the most part, you guys have some really, really good takes, thoughtful stuff, thoughtful solutions. What about this? You know, and, and that's that's what it's about. So I, I enjoyed it. It's one of my favorite part of the day. It has been since we started, and, and it really hasn't changed. Well, Mr. Eatman, just to you know, shine some light on you as well, we're fans of you as well. So in order to be a fan of Nick Eatman, you have to be somewhat intelligent to begin with, you know, especially if you're going to stand toe to toe and actually have a conversation with you. But we appreciate you and what you've done. Obviously, we're fans. That's why your fans are so smart. You hear some of the fans on the other shows be a little cockamamie at times, but we have consistently great callers on this show. Shout out to all of them. And and Rob is is literally the heart and soul of last season, man. He, he spoke from like the place where a lot of us are afraid to say on the radio and stuff like that. So that's always really cool to hear him speak. Yeah. And I'm glad that everybody made it through. But I'm going to get off the phone. Right. You guys have a great day. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sebastian. Man, I got him fooled, Chris. I mean, sometimes they, they, I, I say some pretty dumb stuff every now and again. <laughs> but uh, no, that, that's it's cool. It's been fun. Okay. All right. I, Sorry. I, I, if, I, I, it if I it say slipped. it. You know what I mean? If I say it, I don't need you to. <laughs> it slipped. I'm sorry. It there slipped. You, there you go. Yeah. What are you doing back there? All right. The call uh, lines are open. I believe eight 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 five five two two nine seven. You know, we had twelve or thirteen calls yesterday or Tuesday. Sorry, and uh, and there were a lot of the the, the the heavy hitters. You know, a lot of the ones that call all the time, and. Uh, we've had six so far, and nobody so far. This is the new year. This is a, a, the second season of Cowboys Storyline, season two. If you're scoring at home like Derek does, uh, season um, season two, episode two, um, and we don't have a repeat caller. Whoa! I say that, and then boom! Look at this. Sorry, let's go to the line. Ronnie in New Jersey. Hey, Nick, how you doing? What's, what's up? Back to back. Called on Tuesday. Called on the, just as I was yeah, just saying. Yeah. No repeat callers yet. <laughs> Ronnie, you're in the lead for the whole year. You're up. Yeah. What yeah, do you I got? I was able to get through. I, I, I called like 50 times right now, and I was like, oh, man, I'm not going to make it. You <laughs> like, made it. You made I'm it. I'm not going to pick up. Uh, Nick, uh, you know, everybody's going a little bit crazy. I don't know why. I mean, I get it. Uh, I've been a fan for so long, but. With free agency, this is what we do every year. So, so I think everybody should just, like uh, Aaron Rodgers said one year, just relax, man. Just relax. I, I want defensive tackles. You're not going to get high price defensive tackles on the first day. You're not going to overpay for a run stuffer on the first day. Let's get run stuffers. And, like, I, in the draft, I want a big center, a powerful center. Be is going to, the, to Washington. I was glad to see him go. Honestly, I was glad they took him. That he's not going to be our problem anymore. Let him be, you know, their weakness. Um, offensive line, I would love to see if they could get Tyron Smith back. If they could get yeah. both Smiths back together and draft, I would move up in the draft if you had to pick up that, that, that center, the best center in the draft. Aside from that, draft offensive linemen, a linebacker would be nice. 
we just picked up Kendricks, right? Uh, yeah. um, from um, he used to be in Minnesota. Yeah. Um, that's all I want. It's just just get 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 the groceries, get the main groceries. Everything else, you know, whatever is the toppings. Let, let's get let's get our potatoes. Let's get let's get what we need, which is run stuffers and a big old lineman. Yeah. That's it. Get Tyron Smith back. That's all I want. What do you think? That's that. All right. Are we, do you see Tyron Smith coming back? That's one one thing I wanted to ask you. It okay. Doesn't seem like he's getting too many. Uh, you know. Uh, attention towards him. Yeah. What do you think? All right, Ronnie. Appreciate that. Um, you know, Stephen Jones just um, was was doing an, an event out at the stadium, and uh, reporters were there and asked him some questions. And Patrick Walker was out there, and 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 basically what you know Stephen said, and, and no surprise, just that the door is still open for Tyron, and and obviously this is you know this is what free agency is. It starts out in money. You know, agents and and players have maybe this in mind, and when that doesn't happen, it it, it comes down. Um, the price comes down. I mean, that's that's. That's the cycle of free agency. It's what happens, and so uh, you know, I, I think that it'll have to come down to the point to the part where the, it, it makes sense for the Cowboys. Um, I think it's a big move, though, if if they did it. I mean, like it would be one. I got asked the other day. We did a mailbag. What's the one player you would sign if any of your unrestricted free agents? And I and I would I said Tyron, because I think what that does it gives you so much flexibility after that to say all right. This is where we're going to play uh, with Tyler Smith, and then we can keep TJ Bass as a, a development player and all that. And and then you know we can still draft a tackle because then if something happens to Tyron or Tyler, or, you know injury, you've got some you got some some moving parts there. You can put the tackle out here or maybe move. You know, just think of like your think if you re-sign Tyron, you've got Tyler at guard. Okay. Knock on wood, something were to happen in 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 a game or or you know early in the week, and you lose Tyron Smith at left tackle, then you make the decision. We drafted a tackle. Is it better to play him or is it better to swing Tyler out and put T.J. Bass in? You know who's going to be our best five. But that's what having a Tyron Smith does is when he's healthy, he's he's really good. He's Pro Bowl All Pro level still at this point. That's why I would I would try to sign him, but. If 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 we think he's a Pro Bowl level right now, his agent and and you know does as well, and they're trying to get that money for for him. So, um, but I that's that's kind of what I would do uh, there, and you know, and I like I like what you're saying about defensive tackle. I mean, Hankins uh, would be great to re-sign him. You know, hey, he has said he wants to come back. Of course, the money's got to be right, but I like him as well. And speaking of defensive tackles, and I'm I'm speaking to Chris. In Mississippi here, it was just alerted to me, Willie Blade. Willie Blade was a third-round pick back in 2001, I think. Uh, Willie Blade, he was Mississippi State, so didn't really pan out, didn't do a whole lot. Uh, he was a big, big dude, you know, he was a big guy, but um, he didn't really, he wasn't really, I don't, I don't know how how effective he was. He might have been one of those guys. That was a draft that they drafted a lot of players, a lot of really good players that ended up in the Arena League. Um, That might have been one, but I don't know if he played in the Arena League or not. All right, let's go to Irwin in Denver. Hey, what's going on, Nick? How you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing good. A little snowy up here today. All right. Uh, Yeah, so uh, I apologize to all the listeners and to you and Chris, but I'm I caught half the show. I'm not really sure who all has talked about what, but uh, just kind of picking up what you were talking about, Tyron Smith. It'd be really good if we could kind of sign him. And then the other thing I'd like to see the Cowboys do is somehow, some way, get a really good center this year in the draft. I know there's about three of them that they could target possibly, you know, then uh, possibly get a linebacker in the second round. And then, you know, I don't know where we would – how they feel about uh, the running back from Texas, but I think he would be a really good pickup. But one thing I wanted to speak about Tyron Smith is, and I don't know what you think about this, but I don't think there's another team uh, in the league that's going to cater to, I don't know if catering is the right word, but you know how the Cowboys pretty much let him have the entire week off for the most part. The Cowboys know his issues, the doctors and everything. And I don't really know if another team's going to, you know, really let Tyron Smith take, you know, that much time off and then go on Sundays and play like the Cowboys have this past year. And um, I'm gonna, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, I, I, I'm, I don't know what another team would do there. I mean, I would think if, 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 you, if you're like, hey, this guy's had injury issues 
You know, I, I, I just think they would. I think you, you talk to the coaches and you have those meetings. And you're like, how do we get, you know, how do we get him at, at the right level? You know, and, and maybe it's even a call to the Cowboys trainers. I don't know if they, they talk like that, but it's like, well, this is what we did. And this is what worked. And Tyron's going to say the same thing. You know, it's like it, it helped me now. You know, he, he kind of knows the system a little bit, but it's still relatively, you know, it's like new coach. It was a new offensive line coach scheme and, and a new offense, really. So it's not like he's been here for, you know, the whole time with the same terminology and all that. He had to learn some things, too. But, you know, Tyron, Ty, you know, he knows he knows what to do and how to block on the left side and and, and what they're trying to do. And, and so once he kind of figured that out and, 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 you know, he was there enough at training camp to kind of get a good feel for it. And then and then it works. It's not like you you go to six flags when you're not practicing. I mean, you're here, you're in the meetings, you know, you're you're, you're sometimes you're even out there, too. Um, you're just the wear and tear on your body is just not not the same. So uh, the mental reps for a, a veteran like Tyron is still valuable too. So I, I think I think if he went somewhere else and said this is what made me turn around last year and have a really good season, and, and this is why what, what you're paying for, you want that, you want a that player that was a second team All Pro. This is what it takes to get there. I mean, I don't think I think a coach would be foolish to, to sit there and be like, no, no, either you play or you're out. Like that's that doesn't work like that. All right, uh, let's go to Zach in Mobile, Alabama. Yes, what's up, Nick? How you doing? Good, man. First time caller. Finally got here. Here we go. <laughs> my wife's gonna stop making fun of me because she's they're saying I'm like a crazy girl trying to call you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but uh, had a at least she at least she she called it that. Like it's a crazy <laughs> girl. <laughs> Not the yeah, crazy exactly. guy. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Well, you got uh, through. Just had a, you got through. Yeah, I got through, man. I got through. So just had a few things I wanted to uh, talk about. Uh, uh, Try to call in on Tuesday. But uh, first, I wanted to touch on Dak. Like, I've been – I'm 38, so I've kind of – I've been a Cowboy my whole life, like a fan my whole life. So I kind of came in at the end of the Cowboys era. But, I mean, I remember going out to Wichita Falls, the training camp and stuff with Emmett and Dion and – so I remember those years, uh, you know, the Quincy Carter, Drew Henson, all those years until Romo came about. Uh, to me, it just kills me as a Cowboys fan, man. So many of our fans are just – they're worse than Eagles fans. They hate on their own players. Uh, I think, okay, if you want to get rid of Dak, okay, get rid of him, but then what? Like, what's your plan? Um, I think we have a good enough team uh, that we can advance deeper in the playoffs. I think that what's been holding us back is, you know, scheme – Injury, time management, uh, a lot of coaching. Um, I, I just don't think it's all on Dak. Um, so that was the first thing yeah. I wanted to touch, and touch I, on. And but. I agree with you. I, it's never all on the, the quarterback. And and when they win, it, it's not always because of him. So Yeah, exactly. It, it's, and, yeah, I agree with you. And to me, like, you know, uh, like a caller earlier said that he thinks that Dak will get signed by the end of the week, which – I don't think that's the case, but also, you know, if I was Dak, like, does Dak want to resign? You know, um, you know, so it's, it's, it's both sides here. Um, and then the second thing I want to touch on was the caller saying we should trade Michael Parson. That just blows my mind. He's a generational talent. Um, yeah, he runs his mouth, but I just think that's 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 insane. Um, just just don't know why anybody won't think that. Um, you know, so that's yeah. just my my opinion. Well, uh, good good stuff. I'm I like it, Mike. Uh, I'm sorry, Zach. I'm sorry, the next caller is Mike. But Zach, I, I appreciate the the call and and the first time caller. And you know, I I I agree with you on Dak. I agree with you on Micah. Um, mm-hmm. I understand what the fans are thinking, but anytime you trade someone or you trade anything, you know, you, you trade in your car. I mean, anything you trade, you you're basically like, all right. This is the best it's going to be, and I think I can get more in in money or or return mm-hmm. or whatever than what I'm going to get if I if I stay with this. And yeah, that's the tricky part with with Micah because you know people mature, people grow up, they get it, and I think you know. And, and someone said he's going to be like To and Randy Moss. Well. What color jackets are they wearing? I was about to say they're I Hall mean, of Famers. I mean. <laughs> You kind of deal with it, you know, um, and uh, and I'm gonna I'm gonna tell a story I, I, after after the the call here, but but Zach, great call, appreciate that, um, and key, and call us again, call us back, um, you know, is it, it always reminds me, Mike is Mike is like, um, 
you know, if he's re- referred to as T.O., I mean, I know I've told this story before, but I love I love the John Madden story that he told when he went to training camp back in 2006. It was the first year that, that T.O. was there, and Madden shows up to, you know, to camp in, in uh, Oxnard, and they asked him, what, what do you think, you know, the media was like, what do you think about T.O., you know, and he's a great player, and he goes, he's a he's a check the tires guy, and um Everyone kind of looked at each other like, "What does check the tires guy mean?" And he's like, "Well, you know, when you when you're on a road trip, and, you know, and, and the team the team gets on the bus, and and the, you know the the coach is like, is everyone here? Like, no, we're missing someone. Like, who are we missing? It was like Johnson. Like, you know what? Tough. We're gone. You know, he'll have to figure out his way. Like, oh, we're missing another guy. Who? Terrell Owens. Hmm." Yeah, and that's when you tell the bus driver, well, you go out and check the tires a little bit, make sure the air is good, make sure, you know, you got it, got everything we need. And, you know, we'll maybe we'll, we'll wait a, a few minutes here and there. Like, that's 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 what you do. You wait for a guy like that. You, you make exceptions to the rule for players like that. Michael Irvin is the epitome of that. You know, I mean, he had third, fourth, fifth chances because when he played football for the team, he was amazing, and he was he was great for this team. Um, any kind of other issues that happen, sometimes you deal with them. That's why this is not junior high. This is not high school where you want to treat everyone the same. No, you you don't treat people the same because they don't play the same. And so and that's 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 the reality of it. It's the same with with your job too. There's people that get treated differently probably because of of what they do, you know, for the company. And that's the same with with Micah. So you know, if you want to get rid of them. You better get a lot in return, but but you better do something with that as well. You know, just because you're going to get a first round pick, are you going to get another Mozzie Smith? You know, are you going to get a Byron Jones, a Leighton Leighton Vanderesh, or are you going to get a Micah Parsons? So you want to trade Micah Parsons so you can get Micah Parsons? I mean, like, it, it, it's risky. I, I get the point, but it, it it's not always as easy as that. All right, let's go to Mike in Houston. Hey Nick, uh, the first time caller uh, to the storyline. <laughs> We are getting talk- a ton of first-time callers today. This is great. This is great, yes, great news because it's our second show, and and you know, starting to look like it was some of the same the same people, which is fine. That's great. But this this um, this second year, I mean, what three or four uh, new uh, first-time callers today? This is awesome, Mike. What do you got? I uh, just wanted to say I called you way back in the past once uh, when I became a draft av- you know advocate uh, to go along with my Cowboys fandom. I called you to find out more about Macy Brooks, a fourth round pick from long ago. Uh, you always mention uh, old time picks or old time players sometimes. So uh, I uh, think uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, he didn't turn out too good. <laughs> but we were hurting uh, so bad back then. I was yeah, I was so hopeful. Oh but, man, uh, <laughs> Macy Brooks, man, that <laughs> that's a story. I, um, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not going to tell the story, but uh, Macy Brooks, wide receiver, James Madison. Hey, from James Madison, there, yes, okay. sir. Okay, all right. Um, I'll let you Google what happened. Fair enough. Do you know what I'm talking about? No, sir. Okay, okay. Yeah, he had, <laughs> he had an injury, and let's put it in air quotes, injury at, uh, at training camp. Uh, in 1998, it was Chan, Chan Gailey went to the press conference and and explained the injury for, uh, for Macy Brooks. Uh, but yeah, okay. it's really not funny. I don't know why I'm laughing. As no. a guy, <laughs> I'll just say this: as a guy, we shouldn't be laughing. I'm just gonna leave it yeah, at fair. that. Macy Brooks, fair enough. yeah, didn't didn't do a lot uh, for some reason. No. I think the Bears. Did he play for the Bears? He might have gone to the Bears. Always, or maybe he played against the Bears and had a had a game. I don't know, but I think of Macy yeah. Brooks. I think of James Madison. I think of that injury, and I think of the Bears. But yeah, and uh, just real quick too, it's like my first uh, super quote unquote follow that I was such a fan of, and the Cowboys took was Flozell the Hotel Adams. Uh, thought he was a easily a first round pick, and when he dropped to the second, just because he couldn't hear from one ear. I think we got such a you know obviously such a value over the time. Yeah, but. Uh, Wanted to just say the when my one thought is like I know it's with the Cowboys with free agency. Of course they take it conservative to say the least. But uh, I notice also the trend that they like to sign people who are cut more than just you know true free agents. So the one that kind of popped in my head that you know if they're only giving it one more year maybe with this team, uh, I thought a good fit might be uh, if you're going to be trading or dropping uh, Gallup soon. Unfortunately, uh, Magic with his feet on the sideline. But uh, if you do cut him. 
and let him go. I was thinking about like maybe a Mike Williams, like a one year, ten million, almost money for money. He'd compliment uh, CD and Cook so good, and you know, give him a chance to show that he can play healthy for a year. But uh, I don't know, kind of even money, so you don't have a whole lot going back into the next year, which is there seems to be a big worry of theirs. Just want to see what you thought on that. Yeah, you know the the thing about contracts is that the players have to sign them and 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 I know you know that but you know as good as that that would sound for for a guy like Mike Williams or somebody like that I mean you know they signed a big deal and they're probably looking for another one um you know maybe maybe it's not going to be as what it, what it was before um but I, but it'll probably be more than just just a one year deal but but you see it happen I mean you see these guys signing one year deals um, I would think he would probably warrant a little bit more than that. And also what you're saying about money for money, um, it it doesn't that's not that doesn't work for the Cowboys as much because they don't want to spend that money. You know, that was the problem with Gallup is that they they wanted you know they wanted more production for that. And maybe Mike Williams will get it, but I think that they're thinking, let's let's use that for something else. I mean, let's let's let the draft picks. I mean, think about it. third round pick from Colorado State was Michael Gallup. Colorado State is not a small school, but they're you know they're that they're not Power Five, and so you a couple years later you drafted uh, Jalen Tolbert, third round pick, South Alabama, same type of player really, and then now this is the cycle. It's you know Gallup did his thing. And now it's time for Tolbert to do his thing, and and I think that's kind of what what they're they're thinking here is that's how they're going to try to to get better is keep developing these players. I'm not saying you just lean on the Brock Hoffman at center or you lean on T.J. Bass, but you know the, the draft pick guys like Sam Williams, that's the replacement for for Dorrance and and you know um, Fowler. I mean that's that's the replacement is. The guys you drafted, the guys that have been complaining about not getting the playing time and all that, this is the time. This is this is what it is. I'm not saying they're they're not going to draft other guys or try to get free agency, but they have these. You look at the draft the last couple of years. What I said all the time is is no, it wasn't it wasn't great, but this is a good football team. These are 12 and five seasons. It's hard to just crack in on a roster that's really good. So just because you're a third round pick like a Nation Wright, that doesn't mean that you're just going to come in and play right away because there was a there's a good roster. Now we're starting to see free agency take some away. So these players are going to have to kind of step up. All right, Jeff in North Carolina, last caller. Jeff, you there? The yes, sir. This is the time. All right. This is what it is. I'm not saying there's turn, turn down. Are you there? Yeah, just turn turn down the the radio or the or the. Uh, he's, he's looking up Macy Brooks's injury, which right. I already have. All right, Jeff. Let's go. Last <laughs> caller. Let's go. Let Jeff. All right, man. What's up? You doing okay? I'm good, man. What What do you got? Oh well, I, I won't keep you long. I um I didn't get to call in uh, Tuesday. I, I know that was a long show, but uh, but you know this is what we all expected everything to be this way. You know that they I didn't think they'd go out and do a whole lot, and uh, and I'm glad they got uh, Jordan Lewis back in today. That'll help. But yeah. but you know I kind of I kind of get the feeling too, Nick, and that, that that they may play this thing out and just see how it goes, and and because. Maybe you know my 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 theory is they're going to try to to get this line the offensive line rebuilt some clear out the cap and then depending on how the season goes maybe they move on from some other guys next year and just try to start this thing over again. I mean I don't know I just uh but you know I wouldn't have give Dorrance fifteen thousand dollars. I mean they uh, I mean I I wouldn't have done that there. Dang, but we didn't give him fifteen thousand. I mean, fifteen. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> fifteen million. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I wouldn't have done that. Yeah, I might have given fifteen. 000. Yeah, fifteen. But, yeah. But uh, but I, I just kind of get the feelings that they're just going to sit on. The, they may try to stomach Dax cap hit. Maybe they'll they'll re- restructure or something. But I just feel like you know because all that money, like you said the other day, everything's going to be pushed into next year and. And so, I mean, it, it, they may just have to to go through this and just, you know, maybe, you know, they'll get a bunch of comp picks for all these guys right. they're losing. So, and uh, so we'll see what they do next year. But that's kind of I'm starting to kind of feel that way that they may they may just ride this thing out for a year and just see what happens. Yeah, 
I mean, it de- yeah. definitely could. Uh, you know, thanks for the call, Jeff. Uh, you're, you know, I think I think they're going to attempt that. They're going to attempt the the riding it out, and then, but. You know, Steven says this line for a reason, and he gets, you know, and people joke about it, but he says it, you know, player, you know, or talent acquisition 365 days a year. I mean, and, and it's true. And so, yeah, you, you say, we're just going to go down the road, go down the road, and then the guy gets cut, and then you're like, you know what? This would be a good fit. He played for for this coach, and he knows him, and oh, this would be great. And then you, you, you pick him up, and, you know, and so you're always making changes. If you just if you just got your blinders on, I mean, you're never going to see obviously what's what's around you. So, yeah, you want to focus, but at the same time, you always got your head on a swivel. And so I I think that the I think that approach is good, but I do think the Cowboys are going to, you know, they're always going to make adjustments if if needed. All right, we got a hard out here at 2 o'clock. We're going to leave right now. We'll be back on Tuesday for another edition of Cowboys Storyline. Great show, great callers, a lot of first-time callers. For Chris Beam, I'm Nick Eatman. We'll see you next week on Cowboys Storyline. This has been a production of DallasCowboys.com and the Dallas Cowboys Football Club. How about this, Cowboys?